Hey there, John here, and this is the first part of our exploration of a PC's BIOS. Not every BIOS is the same or as robust as the one I'm going to explore. Further, some may even have more options than I describe here. However, I hope that the information that I provide will still be useful regardless of what kind of machine you're using. Let me first point out, I am no expert. While I've built a number of systems over the years, I consider myself very much a layman when it comes to personal computing. I hope these videos will be a platform to bring in additional information from those that are even more experienced than I. For these videos, I'll be using a Ryzen 5600X based system using an ASUS ROG Strix B550 stroke I motherboard. I love naming conventions of the uh, tech companies. My first video chronicled the construction of that machine. If you're interested, you can check it out. First off, what is BIOS? BIOS is short for Basic Input Output System, and it contains many, many, many options that will configure how your computer will run when it is powered up. When turned on, your system will first POST, that's P-O-S-T, which stands for Power On Self-Test. This is a diagnostic test to make sure that all the parts are working in the machine, or at least appear to be working. After the POST is completed, the system will then enter the BIOS to activate all of the settings that will determine how the computer will function. It is all of these settings that we'll be exploring over the course of this series of videos. So if the BIOS is where the computer's settings are maintained, how does the user get into the BIOS to make any changes? Well, there are two ways. Here's the first way. We're going to restart the system. And when the system starts up, you have an opportunity to hit a key. In this case, it's either delete or F2 to get into the BIOS. So we're going to do that. You always have to be fast on the trigger to make sure you don't miss it. So here we go. Here's the BIOS. Now I'm going to exit out of it. And I'm going to show you the other way to get into the BIOS. System starting up again. This time we're not pressing any keys, so the system will go back into uh, the operating system, in this case, Windows. So now the second way is you can access this through Windows. And I'm not sure how this evolved, but I think this is this came about for, uh, for laptop and uh, uh, tablet users that typically wouldn't get the same splash startup screen that uh, desktop users get. But in order to access that, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the settings. Once you're in the settings, you go to update and security. Then you want to go to recovery. And then you want to go to restart now under advanced startup. System's now going to start going through like it's going to reboot, but it's going to give us a few more menu options here in a moment. You want to click on Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, and then you want to go to UEFI Firmware Settings, which is basically going into the BIOS. Go ahead and click Restart. It will now restart the system, just like we did when we uh, uh, restarted earlier, but this time I don't have to hit any keys. It's automatically going to go into the BIOS. There we are. So either of these methods will will get the user to the same spot as I'm calling it the BIOS, but what's now commonly known as the UEFI BIOS utility. I don't know how common that is actually. UEFI stands for Unified Extensible Firmware Interface and is designed to be the bridge to get the computer from a powered on state into the hands of the computer's operating system. So all of the options in the BIOS are designed to, to activate settings, set things up, turn things off uh, in order to be able to configure it uh, and then hand it off to the operating system from there. There are a few BIOS providers. As you can see at the bottom of this screen, you see copyright American Megatrends Inc. Uh, I actually remember American Megatrends Inc. when BIOS from, from many, many years ago, early on in the uh, uh, PC era. They've been around for a long time. Uh, there's a couple other companies. 
uh, like Award Software, which is the former Phoenix Technologies, which was another early BIOS provider, and then Inside, with a Y, Software, also provides BIOSes. I don't know which uh, motherboard manufacturers utilize which uh, BIOS companies, and I, you know, if you if you guys know, anybody knows, please uh, uh, comment below to let me know. I'd love to start creating a library of which companies provide what. But I do know that obviously here, American Megatrends uh, provides the uh, BIOS for ASUS products. So here we are. You now how know how to get into the UEFI BIOS. So how would you exit? Well, there's a couple of ways to do that. Um, the UEFI, which is much better than the old BIOSes, which you could only use your keyboard, now has mouse availability. Uh, you can slide your mouse right over the exit and uh, be able to restart the system from there. Another way to do that is you can press the F10 key, which allows you to save or discard any changes that you may have made while you were within the BIOS. So as I said, getting around the utility is pretty straightforward. You can use the keyboard to, to navigate. I hit the escape key on my keyboard, and then if I start using my arrow keys, I can start going through all of the top tabs. And if I down arrow, that gets me into that specific section. And then I could arrow through each one. And then I could hit the enter key if I wanted to to make changes. So if I wanted to change the language of my BIOS from English to Francais, I could do that. And then if I wanted to change it back, I could do that as well. Uh, but obviously the mouse is the easiest tool to use in this type of environment. Uh, as I mentioned in the old days, you didn't have that option, but you didn't really need it because uh, there weren't many options to change. Um, so you didn't need something that was as extensive in its ability to, to navigate as you do now because there's so many options now. But again, you know, the menu system is pretty straightforward. We have uh, uh, tabs at the top, which then allow you to take you to specific sections and then be able to make any changes or at least see how those um, individual entries are initially set up. For this BIOS, if you don't want to get into all the minute details, but you still need to make some changes, uh, it offers what's called an easy mode. If I hit F7, that gets me to a little bit more graphical setting, uh, provides me some more basic information, uh, and maybe a little bit easier for the uh, novice to be able to navigate. If I want to go back to the advanced mode, I would just hit F7 again. So I've already mentioned the F7 key. I've al already mentioned the F10 key. Um, the function keys are also very helpful in addition to the keyboard and the mouse. If I want to get help, uh, I would just hit F1, and F1 is going to tell me what all the function keys do. So again, I could use the arrow keys to, to go from tab to tab, or what uh, ASUS says is each screen up and down arrow to select items, enter to select, plus minus to change options, and then all you see all the function keys and all the things that uh, you can change. And you see down there F10 allows you to uh, save, escape allows you to back out, exit, F7 is that easy mode. Uh, one of the ones that I want to point out in this first video that I really like is the search function. If I hit F9, that brings up a search bar and I could enter whatever I'm trying to find within the BIOS. So for example, if I typed in Precision Boost, I see that Precision Boost Overdrive comes up three different times. Precision Boost Overdrive Scaler comes up a couple of times. 
And the reason for that is, is that uh, these BIOS manufacturers put these entries in multiple locations within the BIOS because the BIOS has become so complex. So I might be able to find um, uh, some of these items in the AI tweaker. I may find them in the advanced. I may find them in a couple of different locations within advanced. So if you are troubleshooting or if you're given an idea from uh, someone else on, on how to change your setup, uh, and you have a hard time navigating through or trying to find the entry you want to change, uh, that search option is way more powerful than I ever thought it was, ever thought it would be. Um, and then the last thing I want to do, uh, uh, to talk about, uh, uh, in this first video is the F12 key. Uh, you see down there, that's the print screen. This is great. Um, if you are trying to troubleshoot a problem or trying to match up settings, you can go to any one of these screens, hit F12, it'll take a snapshot of it. And so the next time then you're back in the machine, you can then have uh, those pictures available that you could share with somebody who might be helping you troubleshoot or to uh, a discussion board that uh, talking about various settings and how well they're working for you. Uh, that's another feature that could be very helpful. So that's where I'm going to stop it on this first video. I uh, wanted to be able to provide just a general layout of how you get in and get out of the BIOS and how you navigate. Uh, in the next episode, we'll take a deep dive into the main page, page I'm on here now, and then the My Favorites page. So I hope to see you on the next one. When I bought my first computer, as I mentioned, I remember there only being about a dozen different options. The screen was really basic. It was a blue background with yellow or white type. And I think when you highlighted something, it changed from white to yellow or yellow to white. Uh, and then you hit the enter, then it, then it changed it. Uh, today, the UFI is uh, so complex because there are so many different options that are available. When I started this research, I assumed that all of these options were overclockers who were just looking to get every little bit of speed out of their machines. Um, but as I got into it, I found that that wasn't the case. Uh, as we'll see in coming episodes, uh, there are a bunch of options for all types of users, um, depending on how they want to use their machine. Um, as for today's episode, as I mentioned, for me, the search key was really revelatory. Uh, I never had an idea that that was even available within the BIOS and being able to find certain entries makes my life a lot easier and hopefully you'll find that it's a help for you as well. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you'll stick around. Uh, if you found it useful, please like and subscribe and I hope to see you on the next one.